Okay, good morning, everyone. So I would like to thank the office of Ma'am Christy Dagway Soseo for inviting me and to the USA Publications for hosting this virtual event. So I also would like to congratulate the USA student government for coming up with this um, opportunity for organizations to, to offer virtual, uh, virtual classes as alternative learning options in this time of pandemic and in celebration of the University Week 2021. So my topic is about um, building leadership through volunteerism. So I don't know how and where to start my sharing with you, given the topic, building leadership through volunteerism. I am very happy that I am given this opportunity to share my volunteering journey with my Augustinian family. My colleagues here at the University of San Agustin know about me as a faculty member, as a marketing officer, and as the assistant director of the philanthropic external and alumni relations. But only a very few know about who I am if we do away with those affiliations. Let me put you into context before I share with you my slides. I became an Augustinian by my employment in 2016. So while working at the university, I remained as an active volunteer of the Girl Scouts of the Philippines. And then later I got elected as a central board member. And that's the highest policy making body of the Girl Scouts of the Philippines. So as I studied at West Visaya State University for both my master in mass communication and bachelor in broadcasting degrees, I served as my college student council's chairperson during my senior year, as a curriculum chairperson during my junior year, and as the chairperson of my class when I was a sophomore and vice chairperson when I was in my freshman. So while serving in the university, I also became the chairperson of, my, of the parish youth ministry of the parish of Saints Peter and Paul the Apostles in Barotac Viejo, which is now considered as one of the Jubilee churches in the Philippines as we celebrate our 500th anniversary as a Christian community in the Philippines. Okay, so I am here to speak before you about my volunteering journey, which prepared me in becoming the leader I am today. So I will be sharing with you my slides now. Okay, so I hope you can see that. Okay, so as said, this is the title of my topic. Okay, so let me start by sharing with you this quotation from an unknown author, which says, great leaders don't set out to be a leader. They set out to make a difference. And it's never about the role, but always about the goal. Okay. So when I took leadership roles since grade school, I didn't think about where could all these bring me. While my goal is only to live by the Girl Scout promise and law, um, which I've been living since 2000, and I will recite now, on my honor, I will do my duty to God and my country to help other people at all times and to live by the Girl Scout law. Little did I know that when one gives her heart to what she does without expecting anything in return, a lot of beautiful things can happen. Okay, so one of those is you can establish a good network with the people that you work with. So this is me working with fellow volunteers in the organizations I serve. Okay, one can make leaders 
out of those she leads. So that's me with a group of people I work with in my volunteer journey. One can empower those who lack the confidence to build that based on relevant experiences that you relate to them. And one can build a friendship edifice on trust and common experiences. One can find joy in sharing her God-given talent for the common good. One can influence those who are still in the process of deciphering what is it that God wants them to do. One can share from experience lessons from difficulties that young people need not go through for them to be taught such a lesson. And one can brush elbows with highly influential people who she can't meet had she just remained within the four walls of the classroom. So that's a photo of me with uh, the former Senator Dick Gordon. That's what, when I was still in high school. The photo in the middle is with the uh, then princess, now queen of Malaysia, Asisa. And the other one is a photo of me with the late secretary of the Department of Environment and Natural Resources, um, Secretary Gina Lopez. Okay, one can meet equally or even more motivated individuals who can inspire her to continue to do a good turn for the sake of others. That's a photo with um, very important groups in my life. That's the... Um, Pambansanggawad sa Ulirang Kabataan Awardees. That's my Genesis group. That's the Japan East Asia Network of Exchange Students and Youths. And the photo where we're bringing our respective flags that was taken in Arshale in Adelboden, Switzerland, when we attended the Helen Storrow Seminar dedicated for the environment. And the photo at the lower right is... Uh, our batch photo for the 10 outstanding students of the Philippines, batch 2014. And one can serve as a mentor for those who are interested to take on similar tasks. And of course, one can be rewarded for doing her tasks well. So I was able to be awarded in the Malacanang Palace twice. That's first when I was given the the award as one of the Chief Girl Scout medalists. And the next photo is with my family when I got the award as one of the national finalists for the 10 Outstanding Students of the Philippines in 2014. Um, the other one um, where I bring with me a microphone was taken in India when I represented the Philippines in the 36th World Conference of the World Association of Girl Guides and Girl Scouts which was attended by about 200 countries. And the other one was when I represented the Philippines in the 8th Helen Storrow Seminar. Um, the next photo where you can see the cherry blossoms was taken in Japan when I was an exchange student. And um, the other one was in India. So those are opportunities for travel. And the last photo there with the elephant was taken in Thailand. Okay, so there are so many good and great things that volunteering has brought into my life. But you might ask, what is volunteering? So while the word can be defined in a sentence, I would rather use nine statements to describe it to you in case you have not volunteered for any cause before. But I hope you were able to volunteer before so that you will be sort of familiar with the things that I have to say. So volunteers work willingly together for the betterment of their communities and themselves. You know, the secret why people volunteer? Other than helping other people, the very person that they're helping is themselves. So if you're going through some mental health crisis at the moment, I suggest that you try volunteering. You might ask why. Volunteering is a kind of therapy. The moment you make people happy, you definitely become happier. 
whenever you listen to people's heartbreaking stories, you are eased that you're not the only person in the world who has a problem and that your problem is but nothing when compared to theirs. Second, volunteers play a vital role in the improvement of our society. I can't imagine a world without volunteers. How will communities disrupted by typhoons recover if they only wait for the government's intervention and help? How will families victimized by fire build anew without help from other people? How will communities in far-flung areas be civilized if not for volunteer educators and other stakeholders? In simple words, the communities out there need you. Find out what your strength is and offer them your help. Third, volunteering is a positive force that can make the world a better place for everyone. Can you just imagine if all of us become volunteers? Maybe. The Philippines will be a happier country than what it is now. And if you can recall, uh, the good and bad things that transpired while we're in the middle of a pandemic, despite the rising number of COVID-19 cases, we're comforted by the fact that there are actually a lot of kind-hearted individuals who are willing to help in their littlest way. So recently, there's this group of individuals offering grocery items for free. And there were those um, who pooled their resources to feed our frontliners working in the hospitals and other quarantine facilities. And experts in dressmaking converged to make personal protective equipment for health workers and those who are in the front line in battling this pandemic. Fourth, by giving back to your community, you are not only helping your community grow stronger, but you're also helping yourself become stronger. I began volunteering for my community in Barotac Viejo, Iloilo, in particular, while I was in high school. I wasn't confident at that time with what I do. However, I just, you know, did things. What is a high schooler capable of doing if you come to think about it? However, I just tried to do things such as planting trees, creating an herbal garden for the Eta community in Nagpana. It was a communal herbal garden. Um, I also helped the parish workers in looking for funds for the church construction. I initiated summer youth camps for Barotak nuns and even did Earth Hour as a town. So while I thought all the while that it was I who was helping my fellow Barotak nuns or the other communities I serve, in the long run, I found out I was helping myself more as I prepared for the roles that I have to play now that I'm an adult. I'm an adult. Fifth, volunteering alleviates stress and can have a positive impact on your health. The peak of my volunteer job was when I was in high school until college. So during those times, I was happy doing everything for the communities and organizations I'm serving. There were no ounces of anxiety, just all the happy hormones. I'm not saying that volunteering can totally alleviate whatever stress, anxiety, and depression you're experiencing, as things were different during that time. But I'm telling you, what I'm telling you is that doing volunteer work can help you cope with your stressors, whatever they may be or in whatever form they come. Sixth, knowing that you made a positive impact on someone is an emotionally uplifting experience not matched by money or fame. As I prepared for this talk with you today, I reviewed thousands of photos of me uploaded um, in Facebook and tagged to me by my friends or other people. 
I intentionally didn't take any photo uploaded by me in this talk as I want to see how was I in others' eyes. As they say, a picture paints a thousand words. And looking back, I have worked with thousands of young people, others I know by heart because of the one-on-one -on -one encounters and personal talks I had with them, while others I know by first or nickname basis because of the getting to know you activities every time we do things, while others remain to be just familiar faces. I don't know how much my volunteer life has impacted them, but for as long as I have made a difference to one or two lives, that for me is enough. Although I know for sure that I was a bit successful in making leaders out of them, since our parish is currently vibrantly led by young people, as well as the Girl Scouts of the Philippines. Seventh, many employers indicate that they are more likely to hire candidates with an active history of volunteering rather than someone who doesn't volunteer. Employees are, employers rather, are aware that most people who offer their time are conscientious, honest, and hardworking individuals. Lucky for you that at this young age of yours, you're already aware that these will actually have an impact on your employment in the future. I just can't speak, though, on behalf of the University of San Agustin if this was one of their considerations for hiring me. However, as I worked with GMA Network Incorporated before as its assistant producer, I had this chance to work together with the human resource management in looking for possible candidates. And mind you, we look for those who have leadership experiences and volunteer works at least. With leadership, that doesn't mean you need to be president of the entire student body. As simple as being your class's PIO or assistant treasurer is certainly a point over someone who graduated with honors but has no leadership or volunteer experience at all. If you happen to read my curriculum vitae, one of the accomplishments that I am most proud of is becoming an Ayala Young Leader. The Ayala Young Leaders community is an intimate community of leaders who made a difference in their communities. Your organization need not be a national organization for you to qualify and be recognized as an Ayala Young Leader. It is what you do in your leadership community that makes you stand out from among thousands of leaders who are of your age, who compete for a slot. And just a segue, I'd like to relate to you a story. And this story is known to every Ayala young leader. This one is just an adaptation from the original by Lauren Easley. So its title is called The Starfish Story. The story goes, an old man was walking on the beach one morning after a storm. In the distance, he could see someone moving like a dancer. As he came closer, he saw that it was a young woman picking up starfish and gently throwing them into the ocean. Young lady, why are you throwing starfish into the ocean? The sun is up. And the tide is going out. And if I do not throw them in, they will die, she said. But young lady, do you not realize that there are many miles of beach and thousands of starfish? You cannot possibly make a difference. The young woman listened politely, then bent down and picked up another starfish and threw it into the sea. It made a difference for that one. Number eight, volunteering gives hope to those that need it. There is still a lot of starfish out there. And can you just imagine 
if all those who are just sticking to their gadgets, probably bashing, trolling, creating memes, popularizing fake news, among other things, would go out of their comfort zones and embrace volunteerism as part of or volunteering as part of their day-to-day tasks and checking on the needs of their brethren. How many starfish can we throw back to the sea? How many of those needy will be able to find hope after experiencing a ray of positivity from those individuals who extended them some help? Number nine, volunteering allows us to imbue in others or even strangers the spirit of generosity. How about turning volunteerism into a global pandemic as well? As you know, if one sees a person helping out, sometimes that's enough motivation for her to also do the same. And without you knowing it, you're able to convince people to support your cause by resonating that positivity in the work that you do. How do you think non-government organizations work? It's by showing off to possible supporters how their work has brought an impact to communities. And in that way, stakeholders become convinced to send their financial aid, if not their actual time, in helping build communities. When one volunteer, there's usually no financial remuneration. There are even instances when you have to shell out some amount of money from your pocket to feed your co-volunteers. And if you wish to avoid this, you have to be very good at budgeting and in looking for ways to raise funds for your volunteer organization or group. Although in my experience, never did I experience not being fed when I volunteer. God simply provides. However, some of you might ask, what is it for me? How could volunteering help me? I have several um, points for you. First, volunteers have higher odds of finding employment in today's job market. The skills that we develop out of doing and paid tasks become beneficial in our workplaces. Here, We learn finances, managing people, creativity, dealing with a crisis, among others. And having these skills are and indicating them in your resume or CV later on could help you set a higher notch over your competitors. Next point, stay engaged in the world of work. So volunteers do not become stagnant individuals as they are moving and dealing with varied issues and concerns in the performance of their obligations. They consistently learn new things and improve their concept of how the world operates. Next point. So make a sense in your community and create a sense of belonging. Um, Rather make a difference. So no volunteer feels alone among people who share a similar sense of purpose and direction. What's most important is the impact that your work brings to the community you're serving, which is not a stranger, rather closest to you. Because when you volunteer, you actually look for a community which you can help the best. And sometimes you don't need to look for farther places within your community, those nearest to you. That's the best people who you can help with. Next point, build your skills and gain work experience. So when we volunteer, we must know where we're good at. That's very important. What we are capable of doing. What do we love to do? When you're able to identify your skills and what is it that you're passionate about, you have to stick by tasks related to that when you volunteer. Not only that, you will be strengthening your skills and ignite further your passion, 
but you can ascertain the quality of work that you can deliver for the organization. And there's actually this Japanese term, ikigai, wherein um, it says you have to look for that whenever you, you find a job. Um, you find a job where you've prepared for, that interests you, that, um, that has a purpose for the community, and that it could um, finance your, the kind of life that you have. So once you found that, you treasure that kind of work because you, have, you now have found your ikigai. Next is you meet new people and you build your professional network. So even if you don't earn a penny in volunteering, you at least gain something of more value, and that is a network. Having people who share the same interest and heart for a thing you care about, that is a treasure. So these people will not only assist or support you in volunteering, rather, they can also recommend you to future employers or who knows, they might be your employers later on. So thus, the quality of work that you deliver, whether it's paid or not, should not be jeopardized. Next point, increases self-confidence. So most likely, when one does a task repeatedly, one becomes an expert at it. Thus, the person increases her self-confidence in doing whatever is assigned to her. Whenever it's opportune time for that person to spread her wings and fly, she will have a concept of belief that what she does is actually the right thing. Next point, face new experiences and challenge yourself. The world of volunteering is a very colorful one for those who take the extra mile in challenging themselves and in facing new experiences. It is the bizarre happenings that make volunteering fun and exciting. So without these elements, volunteers won't be hooked and addicted to nation building. And just to go back to the previous point about self-confidence, um, self-confidence is something that's developed and that doesn't happen overnight that one day you wake up and you become confident so it takes a lot of practice so you have to do things over and over again for you to develop self-confidence okay okay so I'm challenging you to volunteer you've got to start where you are Use what you have, do what you can. And that's taken from the words of Arthur Ashi. So you might not have the riches yet to do some philanthropic work. I mean, donating some amount of money for a cause. However, you have something that those who are capable of donating don't have, which is your time. So remember, you are never too young to make a difference or to change the world. So don't underestimate what you're capable of doing. Cheryl Espleen said it beautifully, and I quote, service doesn't have to be big and grandiose to be meaningful and make a difference. Perhaps I will share with you now some meaningful events in my volunteer journey, but you know, do not judge some of my cringy photos these are not rehearsed photos, so I'm not fully aware that all these were taken, although some of them I'm aware. So forgive me if they don't seem to be pleasing to you. As said, volunteering is not a bed of roses, but it is a thorny rose. So this photo is, um, is a photo with a friend of mine when we did some volunteering with my alma mater, Barotak Bio National High School, when they had their journalism training workshop. So this friend of mine is an expert as well in the field. And in fact, he's now currently working with GMA Network um, in, the, in its program, State of the Nation with Jessica Soho. So he's now already in Manila. So this other photo was taken in Cebu 
during the Regional Senior and Cadet Conference in 2017. So I was one of those tapped to facilitate the training. So there is another photo in 2016 where I was sharing um, about leadership to those um, Girl Scouts coming from the 15 councils of the Visayas region. This other photo was taken in Ginpanaan Negros of Occidental. I was requested by one of the teachers, a troop leader, to go there and help them facilitate their event. So my schedule permitted, so I was able to join in with a friend of mine who's also an Agustinian, uh, Miss Flor Catequista. The next photo was taken during our parish family day. I'm usually tapped to be the MC in, in most of our parish events back when I was still leading the parish youth ministry. So you'll see me there singing, although I'm not very good at it. But this one is for the caroling, that a uh, caroling activity for the church construction of the parish of St. Peter and Paul the Apostles. So this photo shows me presenting to the um, group of um, people who were actually victimized by Typhoon Yolanda right in the Purok where I live. So I'm the proponent of this project. It's called Sako sa Sakuna, a disaster survival kit campaign for the victims of Typhoon Yolanda in my hometown. So the event was supported and attended by then Vice Governor, now Congressman Raul Tupas, and Mr. Jerry Bionat of the Provincial Disaster Risk Reduction and Management Council, as well as the local government unit of Barotac Viejo, headed by then Mayor Neil Tupas III and the Barangay Council. The next one was when I facilitated, together with my fellow Tospians, a leadership training dubbed as Youth Hours with the hopefuls of the 10 outstanding students of the Philippines. Okay, so that's me sticking to my annual commitment to cover our Tal Tal Sabarotak Viejo. Okay, that's, that one is um, our annual gift giving to the ETA community in Barotac Viejo. They can be found in Nueva Invencion. So while our town is famous for having an ETA settlement in Agpana, um, these are those who are usual beneficiaries of people's help. Another community, as said, in Nueva Invencion needs much more help. So the photo will show you that you need to traverse a very difficult way in order to get to them. And you have to take a hike, especially if the road network is slippery. Okay, so this is another photo that shows that. So um, what we actually do in the parish is um, during Christmas time, the, the nine mornings, our parish priest would would gather all the gifts presented to the altar. And um, right after Christmas, we, we rearrange them and put them into plastic bags. And initially, we count the number of the families who will be benefiting from the gift giving so that we can equally provide them with, um, with groceries and rice. Okay, so we do that um, together with the parish choir and the altar, um, altar servers ministry and the parish youth ministry as well. Okay, so whenever I am not too busy, I would occasionally volunteer in concerts for a cause to serve as its production crew. So this photo was taken during the, the concert of Gary Valenciano here in Iloilo. Okay, so this one was in Cebu. So I was requested to organize the first ever reunion of the Chief Girl Scout medalists in the Visayas region in celebration of the 50th anniversary of the Visayas region of the Girl Scouts of the Philippines. Okay, so this one, you will see me there playing some volleyball and on the other photo, creating a campfire. 
So when I was still the chairperson of the parish youth ministry of Art Down, I would gather the youth every summer to give them a summer youth camp. So we would camp in either classrooms before, and finally um, we actually had the opportunity to go to Balboa Farm. So it now has been converted into a tourism area. So you you please visit um, Balboa Farm whenever you have time. That's in um, Barotac Viejo. So mind you, I feed about 300 people with about three meals a day. So I'm not, I am not rich, uh, rich, but I was able to tap people to support my cause. So I was able to look for sponsors and provide them with free shirts. You see, when it is for a good cause and you seem to have that credibility, people will support you. So while you're still young, please um, improve on your integrity and credibility because you will be needing a lot of them later on when you assume um, adult roles. Okay, next photo. So that's us singing Christmas songs and giving gifts to the inmates of the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology 6. And that's in Vista Alegre, Barotac Viejo. So we do that every December 31st. Um, it's actually very meaningful in the sense that when we sing Christmas carols to the prisoners, they would cry and remember their life before outside the, the prison cell. Okay, next one. So we hold a parish Christmas party. So, you know, being the, the youth leader, you're always given the, the task of facilitating that. So look at us doing things. Okay, so my team in the youth ministry would organize every May 30 a play day for those kids joining our Flores de Mayo. So the photos will show you, um, see how fun that is for the children. So now these children who we used to organize games with, they're, they're now the ones taking the roles of being the youth leader in our parish. So that time was actually an investment for the future. Okay, so we had a fun run for a cause, which we dubbed as Race to Race. Our objective was to generate funds to help in the church construction. And every Friday, we would gather at the plaza to have our Zumba. So these are the number of people who would often join us in this course. So my classmates and I, in, my classmates in college, went to our town's Gawad Kalinga village and held reading sessions with the kids. And to add more fun, we conducted Miss Gawad Kalinga with those kids. So they even have sashes. Okay, so our college student council, this was taken in our office. Um, we were one of those identified as the 10 accomplished youth organizations in the Visayas region way back in 2014. So what we do with our project paper effect is we, we convert unused sides of the scripts we have and those from nearby computer stations um, those within the area of our university. And we even get paper donations from the colleges in the university. So what we do is we put boxes as stations, gather, um, yeah. And then um, we schedule every month to convert them into notepads and we bring them to our target beneficiaries. Okay, so I guess that's how life has been. And looking back, I couldn't imagine how those were made possible. Although with God's grace, there isn't anything that's impossible. Perhaps I had the right motivation at that time. I wasn't doing all those for the sake of me, but I was doing those for my brethren. So there is no better kind of happiness other than knowing you have changed other people's lives positively. 
and you've inspired someone to make himself better. And you've established yourself as a model for those who follow you to do even more than what you did. As I end, I'd like to leave you with a quote from St. Augustine, which says, What does love look like? It has hands to help others. It has the feet to hasten to the poor and needy. It has eyes to see misery and want. It has ears to hear the sighs and sorrows of men. That is what love looks like. So I'll stop my sharing. I hope that you were able to um, gain some motivation or inspiration to do your volunteer work as well, even that we're currently on, um, on our respective homes confined with our families inside the house. I hope that this will not stop you from doing a good turn daily. And uh, once again, I would like to thank the organizers for having me in this talk and um, for providing you also with this opportunity to know about how leadership can be gained by means of volunteering, which is not the usual way that people find in building their character as leaders. So have a good day.